uh, does go in. Banger finds it. That's a lot of damage on the Mr. Tate. Meanwhile, Chachi tries to do the best. Does keep Shima out of the way of everyone else. But I don't think it really matters here. The Cataclysm finds three. But again, there's just not enough damage to capitalize on it. As one by one, the riddle away. The numbers tick down, and Mr. Tate is the only one who manages to get away with her life. And I believe that's also Baron. So that's one Drake, one Baron, and four kills going over to the Silver Squad. Oh, oh that's quick. Oh, out. Is going to get locked down by two different abilities. The stun comes through the root as well. Make it a double kill as Zeri follows. There's not much to siege with this Baron as there's only base turrets left. And the mid one falls. Angry Presence should follow suit as well. And I think this might just be it as they do have the pure damage. It's just a matter of if they can deal with these turrets. Shima is gonna go gold, is gonna dive into the base. Two of them knocks him out just enough to keep them away. Multiple people mm -hmm. going golden, but at this point, it just seems like a bit of farming, a little bit of fun for them as they do slowly <laughs> march. They have minions. Yeah, they are gonna run right into Banger. They are gonna try to sustain themselves in. Maokai's gonna pop the sapling into the bush to try to give some oh, information. Yikes. They're gonna pop the Maokai all as they chase down the Ooh. J4. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, you know the kid's gonna go in, but it's gonna get hit by the fault Ooh. line coming out from the brawl. And Josu messes up the flash and doesn't get over the wall. Gets found and a double kill goes over to Rapid Fire. Meanwhile, Angry Presence making themselves known as well with Chachi as they secure kills up in the top lane. Chaos across the rift. Somehow, I believe, I think it's a three for three. Rather unfortunate Aesol coming down to help out their buddy and gets punished for it in the meantime. Like you said, second death going over to this Aesol. So not exactly going to run a play as they have had lanes practicing themselves. But oh here, Banger, goodness. just trying to exist in lane and going to get a little bit punished for it. Backed away and going to have to give up this red buff. Yeah, there's yeah, a... absolutely. Uh, it does worry me a little bit right now, uh, especially in the current meta of the game. You know, protector comps are really big. Uh, tanks are a really big prospect. So running two marksmen, while you're gonna have a lot of damage, uh, especially because Jin and Kindred are no, you know, small AD outputs. They are huge heavy hitters, especially late game. So they have to have mm. some sort of protection uh, to, you know, protect them and keep them into the game. Uh, to allow them to get to that late game status and right now while I like Milio a lot it is a little bit more almost like a defensive Lulu at times uh, leaving your top and mid picks when you very clearly are also going to need tanks uh, is just going to allow uh, Chelsea's team to uh, you know ban away some of the high prospect uh, tanks either in top or mid so I think it's a little bit risky but at the end of the day if you can make it work the damage between those two can be absolutely game changing yeah, I mean, you it wouldn't be the best situation, but if Aesol gets some, you know, free waves of farm and is allowed to just kind of scale, maybe not in peace in mid lane, but has a few more waves for themselves, allowing them to get that extra CS, that means they can scale a little bit quicker. And despite, you know, we are talking about how much power the Jin, the Kindred have, and how Gangplank can, I haven't again seen them in much in this meta, but how much damage they can do. I think Aesol is still the highest scaler in the game, so if oh, they yeah. allow that reprieve for that Cosmic Dragon, I mean, it could become a real menace on the rift.